In this session, we're going to learn a very practical skill that I was so blessed to learn um, called GROW. It's a coaching skill. I have some friends and pastors that are very good coach, and I've been really blessed to have good coach that helped me in my ministry. Do you have a coach? If you're church planting and you don't have a coach, that's a big no-no. It is vital to, as a church planter to have a coach. If you're a pastor, you're an elder, you're a ministry leader, it is vital to have a coach. You see, too often as elders or pastors or lead ministry leaders or care group leaders, we are just functioning and uh, doing one role one week after another, but we're not developing as leaders. And that's where a coach can help us. You see, what about you? Are you coaching someone else? Perhaps you have learned some skills, you have some experience, God wants you to coach the next line of leaders. But here's the question I want to ask you. What is the problem with only giving advice? You see, when people we are mentoring, people that we're discipling, over time, we build trust with you. And we, they accept our words, our godly advice, as, as solid advice. And, but you know, if we keep just giving advice to them, and they're growing spiritually as well, they're growing in maturity as well, and we just keep giving them advice and treating them like a child, is that a healthy model? You know, even parents, right? When you grow up, when you have children in your home, when they're younger, of course, you give a lot of in, uh, prescriptive instruction. But, you know, as they grow older, they don't like that. They, you know, you already taught them the principle. Is there a place of actually asking good questions and helping them to realize how to use those principles in decision making. The art of good leadership is the art of coaching and asking good questions. Let me repeat, the art of leadership is the art of coaching and asking good questions. Otherwise, you'll be always instructional. You know, things happen in the church and before any decision is taken, oh, let me check with this elder, what does he say? Oh, would Elder Johnny agree with this? And if Elder Johnny agree, I think that'd be fine. I don't think that would be a very healthy model long term because in the, as the church mature, as the church grow, it's vital that leaders know how to ask uh, and think and to make decisions on principles. And as a, as a leader, we have to shift from instructional as they grow up to questioning and guiding them so that the Spirit of God can work in them and through them. We cannot replace the work of the Holy Spirit. So my friend, do you have a coach in guiding your work? Or are you coaching somebody else? Or are you still giving instructions? Very important question to ask. Why is coaching good for you as a leader? Uh, it's good for you to, have, uh, um, uh, to be coached as a leader because it will increase your ownership to the problem. When I talk to my coach, the coach is there uh, to help me to see from different perspective. It helps me to get unstuck because, you know, when we are following through the problem, we're looking at all the potential risks and consequences, you know, we may get mixed mix up what is consequence, what's principle. And so it helps you. And of course, also stretch you. It's also say, you know, could you think this other way? Can you see it from this other perspective? Can you drive this better solution? It helps you to identify the core issues. It focuses on the next step. It provides accountability. The Holy Spirit frequently shows up when you have a coaching session. I remember before Gateway started, I have no idea about church planting, but I thank God that there was a pastor that was willing to spend once a month with me, and we would just pray together over the issues. I would ask questions, and he would ask me questions, and we would just buck to and fro, to and fro. Uh, we just sit down in a cafe, uh, in a shop, or, and we just discuss some things, and then we spend a good time for prayer. And I tell you, some miracles were answered in prayer, our prayer session together. So the Holy Spirit do frequently show up. And as time go by, God led me to other people. Even to today, I, I value having prayer partners. Uh, my Our fellow elders, fellow pastors, uh, they're such a blessing to me in terms of bouncing ideas and praying together. Now, a coach, a good way to think about a coach is like a midwife. All right, the midwife. You see, 
the midwife is not having the baby. The midwife is not having the baby. It is, uh, she is not the one pregnant, right? She's not the one pregnant. She's the one uh, to help the mother to deliver the baby. Uh, she's there and she's going to be involved, but she, the spotlight is not on her, it's on the mother. So when you think about coaching, it's about empowering the people, not taking away their problem and giving them prescription, but helping them to see how God can lead them to formulate the direction. Now, the strategy of coaching that we're going to look here, the skill we're going to look here is called GRO, G-R-O-W. G stands for goal. What do you want? R stands for reality. What is happening? O stands for option. What could you do? And W stands for what will you do? This is a model that Steve Addison in his ebook uh, that I've shared with you on the folder. You should download and have a look and have a read of it. Okay. So these four steps are important. So when I'm in conversation with people, I'm pretty much going through G-R-O-W. If I'm coaching somebody else, I'm going through G-R-O-W in my mind. It's a framework. It's not linear. You can go in between uh, and to and fro. Um, the good news is this, that you need to, this method can be adapted. It can be adapted to your situation. Um, and so, for example, go. What do you want? So, for example, I had a conversation with somebody recently and talk about the disagreement that they have uh, in terms of um, uh, his member and him and uh, his uh, church pastor and they have a dis, uh, uh, differences in values. And uh, so I asked him, what is, I first asked him the situation, can you explain the situation? When we meet together, uh, this is a coaching situation, I will ask them, so what would you like to discuss? Uh, tell me about the situation. So I haven't touched goal yet. Sometimes I go into the uh, asking them the reality of the situation. So I can go to reality and I can come back to goal. But ultimately, you have to come back to goal. The goal is like, what is your objective of doing this? Why is this so important to you? What's the outcome that you would like to look for? What does success look like to you? Like, what are you trying to achieve? Uh, where do you want to be in three years' time? Uh, what do you live for? What outcomes do you want from this discussion? What can you celebrate since our last chat? What results you can thank God since our last meeting? You see, the goal is vital. We can whinge about problem and our, he can whinge as a pastor, complain about his members' differences with him. And I can hear it out for about 10, 15 minutes. But ultimately, I'm going to come back and say, so what do you want from this situation? Do you see this value conflict so big that you want to take this action? That action or that, what action do you want to take? What the objective you want to achieve from that? And sometimes we have to go back to the reality of what's happening. So this is often times when we get to know the issue. And in, in, grow, in grow, the next R stands for reality. What can you celebrate? How are things at home? How's the team going? Where are you and God? How are you and God in, in this situation? What are you learning about your role? How have you been challenged lately? So it's okay to jump around a bit before going deep into one issue. So sometimes we talk about broad issues together when we are coaching. What would you like to talk about today? You know, and we're back to the goal. What would you like to talk about today? It's another, you know, what would you like to talk about today? This is important. You got to ask this question if this isn't clear. What would you like? Make sure we zoom in. And the person say, Johnny, I want to talk about my value conflict between me and my member. And I say, Okay, this prominent member and you have a different value conflict. So we discuss about it for a while. I'll come back to the goal. So what do you want to achieve from this? What is the outcome you're looking for? Have you thought through that? So we look through this and then finally say, oh, well, I want to have peace between us. I say, great. Or do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to, uh, I want to change his values. Is that your goal? Uh, is that important to you? Why is that important to you? So we talked about it a little bit more. And then... We rotate back to this. The next one is, um, uh, this, this is about reality again, you know. We're trying to figure out what's going on. You say, can you describe what you're facing? What's going on around this issue? What else is going on? This what else question is very important. I always use this. What else is going on? Can you draw a picture of this issue? How are you doing in this? What's the real heart of the issue here? What's going on well? What are you learning? What are you reluctant to face with this issue? What are you most concerned about with this issue? So 
Remember this list of questions. These are vital list of questions for you while you're coaching with people, asking these questions, okay? So then the next step we go to is option. Option, what could we do? All right, if this is the goal you want, your goal is that you want to um, educate a few of the members um, of what the true value should be. It is different from the prominent uh, uh, leader. Then is your goal trying to change the prominent leader or your goal trying to educate some core members so that when you leave from there, these core members understand and uh, maybe be an influence later in that church. So you look at the options, okay? What could you do to change the situation? What else could you do? And what else? Always ask what else. What else and what else and what else? What possibility for action do you see? Even the unrealistic ones. Uh, if you did something different, what would it be? If there were no restriction, what could you do? What happened you consider? What options interest you? What are the pros and cons of your option? And then go back to reality. Which option will help you to achieve your goal? Go back to your goal. Can you see? So it's like a washing machine. Grow, reality, option. Go back to reality, go back to grow. Sometimes you go to and fro. This It's like a washing machine. You're going up and down between this. It's like moving up and down like that for a while. And then finally, when you get to a point where you're, uh, he's coming to a conclusion where he's going, you ask this W question. is what will you do? What will you do? Okay. And then this is a very key question to ask because there's no point talking about options, but you've got to ask him, what will you do in these circumstances? How will you follow through on the best option? Who else needs to be involved? What obstacle will you face? What support do you need? How will you get there? And this is a key question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how lightly are you going to implement it? If they say it's a 6, tell them that no way it will be done. If they say it's an 8 and ask them why not a 10, what would it take to get it to be a 10, right? How do, what do you need to drop in order to get this done? How will things get done before our next appointment? What needs to go into the calendar? What, who do you need to meet to make this happen? When do you need to meet to make it happen? Can you understand? So GROW is really a, a tool of asking good questions. After a while, when you first do this, when you first do GROW with people, it might feel a little bit awkward and artificial because you're trying to think what are the questions. You know, I first remember first doing this, I had to scribble all this question into a little uh, post-it note, uh, put it, hide it between my, my Bible, and I would, uh, while I'm talking, uh, I'm thinking through what question to ask next. But you know, after a while of coaching, you get used to asking these questions. You get used to seeing uh, where they will go with this question. So using GROW is a very important model. I will give you an example. I was talking to a ministry leader who had a ministry that is raising funds for volunteers or Bible workers in a third world country. As I was having this conversation with the leader, I was asking questions related to GROW. And he's probably unaware, but that's the way I was asking questions. I was explaining, give me an understanding of the ministry you're involved in and what's involved. And he was telling us that, oh, it's a very wonderful ministry. They do employ a lot of Bible workers and the Bible workers can do the work in the mission field. They get great reports of baptism and so on. So I asked them, what's the vision? What's the pur uh, what's your objective you want to take for this ministry in the next step? I get, they were saying, he was saying, well, we're thinking of improving better reporting. Oh, we're thinking of expanding it more. So, I wanted to clarify what's his objective of this ministry. Is it just purely a fundraising ministry? Is it a, a, a ministry to expand to other countries? Uh, where are you going with this ministry? And this is where we're trying to establish the goal and the objective. And then, uh, and then we look at the reality of the situation. So I say, where is this ministry operating? Uh, who is on the board of this ministry that people are comfortable to give funds to this ministry? Uh, how is the transparency like? How is the governance like? How is the uh, funds being distributed? Is there confidence in the way it's being distributed to the right projects? So he talked a little bit about the composition of his council, the board that looks after this ministry. And I said, is this the right combination of people? Is there other ways to make it much more effective or transparent or accountable? So by asking about the reality of the situation, uh, we begin to unpack 
then I said, well, what are the options here? What are the options of moving forward regarding this ministry? It's a great idea. It's blessing a lot of people. What are your options of this ministry? Do you need to uh, talk to the other council members? And what would, would be the key agenda that you want to discuss with them about? And then the next step is what will you do? What will you do? So step by step, as we go through this example, and this is just only recently we had that conversation, step by step as we go through this example, I found the, the tool grow is a very effective way to keep the conversation heading in the right direction. And after that, uh, we prayed over it and uh, we asked the Lord to bless the ministry and give them a greater um, vision of where God wants this ministry to go. So my friends, I hope that you will try this tool out and see that it can be used in your ministry as a leader to coach other people. What I'd like you to do is, uh, uh, I would like you to role play now. I'm going to divide you to groups and we can role play now. Group of three. Uh, you One is an observer and the other two is a pair. Pick an issue um, and you can ask the questions and then practice the questions. At the back of your lesson guide, you will see all the questions listed out already there. And it's a very important uh, thing to have in your lesson guide. And so you'll be able to ask the questions. You'll be able to uh, practice asking this question. I tell you, initially, it's not very not easy and comfortable to do this. But I, I, it is a super, super important skill because you cannot just be always giving instructions. So here at the back of the lesson, you see this page. Uh, look at this carefully. Always put this page in your Bible or in your notebook when you meet with people. It's something you can use to ask questions. So one of them is going to be a coach. The other one is going to be um, uh, being coach. Uh, the coach asks the questions about the grow. And then uh, for 10 minutes, they work through that. Then they swap role. The observer can give you some comments as to what worked and what didn't work or what questions, or uh, what was it logical and so on. So the observer, that's why you're three percent involved in this, this role play, okay? So you pick an issue. Uh, the coach can ask, what would you like to discuss today? And so on. So you go from there. I want you to practice this. And it'll be a great exercise for you to learn how to use GROW. Our final session is next, uh, our next session. Wow, time passed real quick. We're in the final session already. We're going to learn about key ministry indicators. And we're going to review what we learned. We're going to open up the round table and to pull all this together. All the topics that we learned together, six topics, we're going to pull it all together. I want you to learn, uh, read out the church manual about elders, page 69 to 77. Very important section of the church manual. And watch the training video as well. I look forward to seeing you in the next session.